we are actually going to be making a moisturizing barrier lipstick but it is really not a lipstick it's not going to be colorful like all these different kinds online see that it's an empty tube right at the moment but we are going to make a lipstick for the website that's a beautiful tube isn't it it's really cool so anyways that's what those are back there but um, the reason we're doing this is because this actually is not just any lipstick. This is not a lip balm at all. This is going to be a moisturizing barrier for the lips. So it is to help protect the lips. And you can actually layer your lipstick over this. And this will act as like a barrier underneath your lipstick. And it actually helps to keep your lipstick on, but it also keeps your uh, lips very moisturized. So the reason for this is that this is completely different from our lip balms. Our lip balms are made with beeswax. This is not. So let's dive into this project and I'm going to show you actually how to make it. I'm not going to give you my recipe, but I am going to show you um, how to make it. And we are going to be on a stove today. So let's talk about the products. So this is called Carnaba. And actually, you can see it right up here where it comes from. Uh, Carnaba is actually vegan. It's food safe. It is designed for uh, beauty products. Um, there's a lot of research online that you could actually do. This one I chose because of the fact of um, that it's a vegan product and it's pretty versatile. It has a lot of benefits for the skin. So this is one of the bases for our lipstick that we're going to make. It's a different kind of lipstick, like I said before. So it's a lip barrier and that's what we're gonna make. So this is one of the ingredients. This is another ingredient called candela wax, all right? Um, it comes from a plant, it's derived uh, it, from this plant in Mexico, okay? So this um, actually is a vegan product and this is a replacement for beeswax, so is the Carnauba. So these are the two waxes that we'll be using that are vegan base that come from plants, all right? So let's go on to the oils. So you can see that I just added a ton more products to this table. <laughs> so here we have sunflower seed oil and this helps prevent chapped lips. It actually is a UV protective for sun damage. So if you get sunflower seed oil, this is actually a great way to apply to your skin during the summer months, um, even anytime actually. But um, this is going to be in our uh, lip uh, moisturizing barrier lipstick okay so that's one of the things I will say if you're gonna make lipstick <laughs> you cannot leave this product out castor oil it, it you just can't it it is the base the main base of lipstick you cannot leave it out from all the research that I looked up there's for some reason there's just you can't leave that out but this is the reason why that a lot of companies will use castor oil is because it is a humectant that retains skin moisture. And it actually is the highest oil for retaining moisture in your skin. And if you buy products from me, you will know that castor oil is one of the main ingredients for my soaps. Okay, so this is a biggie. It is one you cannot do without in lipstick. Sorry, you don't have castor oil, can't make lipstick. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one, all right? Grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil here is um, helps soothe the skin. It also, with your lips, it's the soothing a factor, uh, factor, excuse me. And it helps to um, heal your lips when they're damaged. So that's why I'm putting this into my lipstick, okay? And we're moving on to more oils. There's two things left. That's actually, that's not an oil, but this one. Meadow 
foam seed oil. Hey, I actually got that down this time. <laughs> it gives a smoother appearance to the lipstick. All right, when you're applying it on your lips, it uh, sticks. It helps the, the lipstick to stick well to your lips. Uh, it gives it a beautiful shine, but it helps to cr uh, it helps those cracked lips to heal. This is a healing property. And it um makes the moisture in the the lipstick last longer on your lips. So this oil is one of the oils I'll be using today uh, for our moisturizing barrier uh, lipstick. Okay, so I haven't really given it given it a name yet, but that's why I'm doing this is because I want it to be a very healing uh lipstick that you can apply underneath all your favorite lipsticks but it's a barrier it's going to be a barrier lipstick so that's why i'm making this product but this is meadow foam seed oil if you haven't done research on it check it out next one vitamin e we all know what it does we know that it's great yeah can't leave it out of a lipstick i'm not going to go into detail with this one so make sure you have this one and castor oil okay all right, I did forget two other products that are on a table here. Um, basically, these are just lip safe flavors, okay? So you can put these in lip balms, lipsticks, it doesn't matter what, but these are flavors. No sugar added, and they're vegan. There's no sugar added in this at all. It's just the, the flavor, that's it, all right? And these are lip safe products. Um, they're micas, and I don't know if you could see it on here, but it is designed, it is approved for the lips, the eyes, and external use. So these from Nurture Soap, there's a lot. TKB also has uh, colorants and different things that are lip safe by the FDA. And so these are micas, and this is what I'll be putting into the the colors but later on I'm, I'm not even doing that right now so the first step that we're gonna do and talk about is the wax so let's go there all right everybody so i did my recipe on the side i will not be giving you the recipe for this lip barrier the moisturizing lip barrier because this is something that i formulated myself so i will show you the process of what to do when you have your ingredients for it, okay? So I'm gonna just take my spoon and put it over here. So these are the waxes all together. We're gonna put them in the ramekin, all right? And these are all the oils that I have here together, and we're gonna put that in the ramekin. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. After we put all of our stuff together there's a water bath here we're going to stick the ramekin inside the water bath and we're going to slowly melt so let's put this on whoops excuse me put this up i'm gonna start low 320 we're gonna start low and then we're gonna go up high and um at this point i'm just gonna do a quick melting phase thing. So now what I'm going to do is transfer this hot oil into this container here because this mixture actually needs to um, become a paste and that will be the base of our moisturizing barrier lipstick. So I'm going to pour that in here for right now. I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to cover it and just let it cool down to a paste and then I'll be back for the second phase. Okay, so now we're on to the cold phase of this product. You can see that it is solidified in this container and my mom actually came up with a good name for this new product we're going to call it a lip shield because this lip shield is going to um help your lips prevent it from being cracked or having chapped lips 
It will moisturize and soothe your lips, give it a shine. It'll actually help your lipstick to stay on. It will be a natural UV protective with the sun, uh, sunflower seed oil. So there's many benefits to this product. Um, I would definitely, we just took a little bit from the container that was left in the, the ramekin. We tried some of it and the recipe and I really love the formula. It's very silky, smooth. Um, it applies really easy to the lips compared to a lip balm. It glides on really nice. So the new name for this product, uh, like my mom called it, we're going to call it a lip shield. So this is going to be called a lip shield because it's a protective wear for our lips. So let's move on to how to make the actual lipstick. You can see I have <clears throat> a few molds here. Um, this four casings. You can get metal casings, but I wanted to try this because it seemed a little easier. All this is are these metal pieces on top. I'll hold this like this. And this is the, <clears throat> the molds. So you'll see different types of designs for the top of the lip, the lipstick. Um, so all you do is when you get this, There'll be like a, another uh, section to this, a whole nother uh, piece of equipment that comes with this to remove old stuff from an old case. But these are new, so you can see that they are brand new. There's nothing wrong with them. They're empty, clean. So we're going to fill them. <clears throat> so we don't need to worry about the other half of doing a replacement. That's if you want to do it yourself. So what you do is you take this, you can see the indentation there on here. You're gonna take it and you're gonna cap all four of these pieces on here like this. This whole section will be put into the freezer. We're gonna freeze this in order to be able to slide it into the top section of this. You'll see it later on. All right, so for right now, I'm gonna go get my gloves and we're gonna start with this next half of the the lip balm, we're going to be coloring it, flavoring it, and then melt it down, and then we'll be pouring it into these molds. That's the next step. Okay, so now we're going to take a tablespoon of this base and add the flavoring that we want and the color, and then we're going to put it in these molds. So when you stop and think about it, it's going to take a tablespoon to go in here to make one lipstick tube. So really that's what you buy at the store is one full tablespoon, okay? So if you're making this at home, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take this spoon, fill it up, and get a tablespoon out. It's pretty hard actually, but it glides on, amazing. Okay, so now we're going to pack it down And then we're gonna put this in here like that to make sure we really pack it down, no air. I don't want any air pockets in mine. So that's why I'm doing this. You guys know that I, I don't overfill my stuff, but I do like to pack it out as much as I can. Okay, so that's all we need for one. That's all we're gonna do right now is one. And um, I mean, I'm gonna do all four, but I'm gonna do one for this one and then mix it so I'm gonna do one just to show you the amount because if you just want to do one at home that's what you're gonna do okay so you have one tablespoon in there I'm going to do all four, but I'm just showing you this step for one minute, okay? So when it comes to the flavoring that you want to do, you don't have to do any flavoring. Don't have to do it. But if you want to do it, um, let's do cotton candy for right now, okay? If you want to do it, 
Uh, just know the ratios of, you know, how much you're going to do per tube. I mean, yeah, per tube. So I'm only doing a drop to two drops of flavoring per tube because I really don't want to compromise the texture of my uh, the base that I just made. I spent a lot of time on that, so I don't really want to compromise it. So I'm only going to do one to two drops and that's it. That's it. You got two drops in there. Okay, that's more than enough. And I'm doing cotton candy for this round. All right. And then, so for cotton candy, the same thing goes for micas or lip colors or any of that. You really need to know the ratios and what the companies say you can and can't use and go by that. Don't, don't overdo it. Because this is on your lips and you do digest it. Okay. So... Now for this, I'm just going to put a little bit, not a lot, just like not even half of this tea, this little spoon here. It's a micro spoon, but literally just a touch of that. Let's see if I could focus in on it so you can see what I'm doing. You probably can't. The camera is just so small, I can't even really get it probably. So you're just going to take it and... Lightly dab it on there. That's just to give it a shimmer effect. Even though you're going to have a shine with the oils that are in here. That's just to give it just a little bit of color. Not a lot. And now did that. And now we're going to do, where is this other one? This one here. I'm trying to do this while I'm filming. All right. And then this, we're just going to try to mix the shades to see how far we can get with it. We don't really want, this is where the coloring factor comes into play, okay? Um, we don't really wanna to do too much here, just a little bit. So since this is the same, I'm gonna use my same spatula, okay? And then all you're gonna do is mix what you just put in there and here, okay? That's it. Now I'm gonna go and take the rest of this you, if you're just going to make one, if you're going to make one tube, just one, that's all you do. You melt it down and then you're going to pour it in here. That's it. Okay. I'm going to do four. So I'm doing all four of these casings. So I'm actually going to add more to this. So for those that only want to do one, this is all you do. Take it, melt it down very lightly until it's a liquid phase. And then you pour it in here. Okay. So for the rest that want to do more, this is the next step that we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead, wipe this off. Okay. And I'm going to put this on the side up here one second. Okay. I had to go get another spatula. <laughs> You need a lot of spatulas for this. So now I do three more because I have one in there. I want to do three more. So you're going to scrape off for three more. Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So there's another one. Okay. Move that in there. Just for three more. Now I just need two more. Oh, it's really hard. You can feel it. Really quite interesting how this packed out. Getting messy. Okay. And then just one more after this one. And that will be for all four cavities of the mold.
Okay, I think that's plenty. All right, and now I will add the coloring, the micas to this, and they are lip safe, don't forget. You need stuff that is lip safe, All right? So we're gonna leave that alone, put that there, put that away. And again, we were using cotton candy. So we already put two in, so you need two, four, six more drops, okay? So you're gonna do one, two, three, whoop, four, five, six. That's it. That stuff comes out fast. All right, we're gonna leave that alone, and now, oh, it smells so good. It smells like really like cotton candy. So I'm gonna add a little more of this to it. Maybe a little less. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and melt this down and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I did add off camera this one, two more scoops of it to give it more of a pink hue because it's so nude that it's just gonna be like the color of your lips really. So now what we're gonna do, and I don't really wanna go for color, I'm going for the um, the benefits of the moisture in the skin. So we're just going to take this mixture and pour it in here, and you'll see how it's going to change when it cools. You're also going to see when I apply it to my skin, the color it's gonna be, okay? And I have olive tones, so we're just gonna fill this up, the cavity, and we may have to remelt it, and that's okay. It's like filling lip bombs, but it's not. This is lipstick. <laughs> okay. I have to mix it around a little bit. You can see it's starting to solidify again. So I'm going to have to go and warm it back up again. But I have plenty to do more. That's the nice part is, is you know, there's plenty in here that... I can do several of these. And I am overfilling them for a reason, and I'll show you why after they um, cool. I'm not gonna show you right now, but I'll show you after they cool. Whoop, a little high, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take this and stick it in the freezer, and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about this. I got a little spatula. It's actually a cricket spatula, but I'm going to remove the top, those tops, because that's what you're supposed to do. It's the instructions, and that's what I'm going to follow. These are ice cold. You can see this is how they look. So my freezer gets cold really, really, really fast. So I'm just going to take what's here, no waste put it back same thing with the rest of them each one is gonna be chopped off and I am gonna put a little bit on my skin just to show you what it looks like because that's what it, so I may keep a piece on the spatula to show you all right so let's get the first one out and it says that you need to um, remove the top. <gasps> oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. Okay, that came off really fast and easy. <gasps> oh, wow. That's really easy to unmold. Okay, I am impressed. Yes, you are hearing my ridiculousness. Okay. Wow, very nice. Has a shimmer factor. Okay, let's get to business, right? So, I'm going to take it. We're going to make sure that the X internal, if you can see it, very top. You see it moving up there at the very top? You need it to be all the way up like that, okay, if you're going to be doing this. 
take this, flip it upside down, and go directly over top of what's here. So you're going to line it up right on top, and you're going to hold it underneath and push. Push it. It says to pull it a little bit because it's a it's plastic and mold and then you rotate this hmm this might be the harder part uh, let's see kind of reminds me soap almost where you got to pull the pull the mold the silicone mold away from the product so that it's like a vacuum almost let's see if it'll come out Ooh, I see it moving Oh, 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 I think it did. It came off. Let's keep going. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Very cool. All right, you can tell that I'm impressed by this. It's, it's first. It's a first. It says, hey, it is what it is, right? So I did see a line in there. No, it is a line. There is a line right there, but that's nothing big. It's probably how come of how I poured it, but that's not a big deal. Oh, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Okay. So let's do the rest of these before there's any issue. There's one. This is all cotton candy. Again, make sure the lid is up like so. Go over it, line it up. Exactly. I see what they're saying. You have to be really in line with it on the top. All right. And then you pull it from the sides just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to like pop it. Uh oh. This one didn't work. Oh, <gasps> disaster. Okay. So put it back down and again, it's not a disaster. You just do it again. So I'm gonna actually align it where the things are at. Okay, let's do it right. I think we're supposed to. If there's a mess, there's a mess. I could always re remold this not a big deal which is really cool okay so this is not going to work this one didn't come out as well as it should have and i might have to remold this one it's not too bad. I'm not really happy with it, but the steel cavity ones, believe it or not, the steel cavity, like if you were to do this in a steel mold, you actually have to hold it and push it down and apply it like this. So there, that held. Okay, now let's get it. Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay. Yay. That'll be a gifter. I'll give that one away. <sighs> give it to my mom. <laughs> She's going to hear this and be like, that's not nice. <laughs> Anywho. All right, let's get to the rest of the these. I'll put that one aside. That's a, that's a messed up one. And this is what happens. It's not a big deal. You just do the best you can and go with it. And it could be that certain ones are just not, I don't know. It could be that they're, and it could be too that maybe the silicone isn't as good as the steel molds. But I would not know. I'm trying to get it off, I think because my gloves, but I don't really want to take my gloves off because... If I want to sell these, I need to. Hmm. 
And I'm going left and right like the company says. Go left and right, go left and right. That's what I'm trying to do. I think it went. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay, so I'm having a problem with these silicone molds. And it may be the fact that I want to go with a steel mold instead next time. Oh, getting it out is a mess. <gasps> okay, let's end it there. Okay, so I actually had an issue with another one. You can see it got stuck down in there. I don't like that. I may actually take oil and kind of swab the inside of that just so it comes out easier. That's just a thought, but that's two, two out of two because I just popped this one in to see off camera and it actually came off. Look at that. Came off. And it's good. It's a heart. It's like, you see that? A heart, which is really cool. I like that. That's really neat. It's a heart shaped. And so two out of two. Okay. So I'm guessing that the molds, the molds are not friendly user. Um, I would say how clean it came off this steel. I think I'm going to invest in just getting a whole steel mold. Because that was a whole lot faster than what I'm doing right now. Um, just kind of a heads up on that. So if you see this thinking, oh, well, it's like a soap mold. Mm, no, not the same concept. Because that's what I was thinking. And no, it's not. <laughs> definitely doesn't work. Definitely is not the right concept. So I have three of them. One I'm going to gift away and two I could actually sell because I, I really don't like when I mess up a product look that's just ugly I mean really no one would want that in the mail <laughs> just my opinion but anyways so I got a gift one and and I'm really saying this is two out of two out of two with this company's mold because um the mold didn't really work. So I say go with a stainless steel mold uh, if you see it, if you want to make something like this. Look how nice. Those are beautiful. Those are really, those are really nice lips. The, and these are, I decided my mom came with a good name. They're lip shields to protect your skin, to protect your lips, I should say, because it is your skin. So moisturize so look you see how pink it is now let's see how it looks i'm gonna close them up but let's see how um let me make sure it's all the way down let's see how it does against my skin i have olive toned skin um so i'm gonna take my gloves off for this so you can see the difference all right this is a little piece that we have here. I'm just gonna go ahead, put that on my skin. So you can see, even though it's pink, the micas really are not uh, very uh, strong with this. So there's that, that's underneath of my eyes. So it's really glossy, but it's not at all uh, color like there's no color factor to it really now let's take my hand we're gonna put it on my hand and usually that's what you do with a lipstick or lip gloss you put it on the back of your hand to see if it's if you're at the store you shouldn't you shouldn't unless they have a tester but you can see how glossy it is it has a pink you can't see it on my camera it's a very, 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 very light pinky color tone, extremely light, but it is very glossy, very glossy. And this really is so smooth, really smooth on the skin, really smooth. There you go. Okay. Very smooth on the skin and it has a, that nice shine to it. All right, you guys, so that is 
<laughs> that is the how you make my lip shield. I'm not giving you my recipe, but I if you want, I mean, I could always do something with a recipe on here to show you guys, but I gave you the basics, how the process is and what goes into it. Um, the only drawback out of everything that is here, the mold. So again, I would, sorry for my camera. I would not invest in silicone. The silicone molds, not worth it. I would invest in metal. These things are still cold. And it came off beautifully off of the, the lip. Uh, the lipstick part and they adhered in here really nice again these are just beautiful real pretty and i will be selling um the ones that are come out nice not this this is going to be a gift um but i will be selling the ones that are really nice okay i gotta seal and package them clean them up so those will be ready how cool is that so two out of four on one gifter but two out of four and the best part about this to you guys is that all of this that's left behind remelt okay and repour remelt repour remelt repour this is not waste okay you do not have to waste this at all just remelt it repour it okay all right i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and have a good one bye for now